I need some advice, and you seem like the perfect person to ask. I just lost someone very close to me, my grandmother. She went very suddenly. The thing is, the day of her funeral, I couldn't cry. There was the coffin and the dirt and the bitterly cold gravestones, and I, for the life of me, couldn't cough up a tear. This is a person who was like a mother to me, but all I could think about was, will I still be able to see the social network with Mike tomorrow? What is wrong with me? There I was, burying one of the only people in the world who really knew me. And I couldn't shake the feeling that, for some reason, I wasn't sad. So when we saw Mob last year, what's your new toy? I don't want to think about it. It was Lord Robert. Wow! Oh. 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 Like, oh. oh. like, oh. Come on, I have so much to tell you. Thank you. So anyway, do you remember New Day from last year? Well, I don't. He was a little bit of a douche, and I wasn't really sure what to do with him. And then I met Joshua, and it was just the most exciting. Let's do honey's yours, Dave. Well, I'm about to get some coffee. Any of you want to make yours Irish? Mom. So, uh, whatever happened to Robert? That old coot. Well, a woman such as myself in her 30s, I can't be bothered to be with somebody who's prone to heart failure. 30s? Mom, four facelifts cannot change factor 53. What is with that accent? Darling, a woman never ages past the age of 39, and you two ought to be thinking about that. No. You're getting up there, you Seriously, know. Seriously, what is with that accent? I you know, you're from Jersey. Oh, hush. Now, Eddie, I'd like to introduce you to my two darling little girls, Morgan and Tanya. Of course, I was practically just a girl myself when I had them. We all ladies look like sisters to me. How long are you staying this time, Mom? Ooh, I'm not. We're uh, peddling off to Mexico. Peddling through Mexico? Well, Eddie, he sells Winnebago's. Winnebago's. He borrowed one for the trip. Why did you bother coming here today, then? Oh. Well, um, girls, uh, about a month ago, your father passed. He what? Uh, he's dead? What? I, I don't believe this. What? Okay, Tan, we haven't seen the man in like seven years. It's not like he cared about us. Or mom. Your father left my life a long time ago and uh, and I'm moving on. Peyote. Oh, how did how did you even find out, Mom? Shelly Spriggs? She told me, you know. I never liked that whore. She was your best friend, Mom. She weren't not. D-Bird, we gotta go. My bagel's gonna be leaving in five minutes with or without your sweet cheeks. Oh, I'm sorry. Listen, once we get settled, maybe you settled. Down and visit. I thought you were traveling, Mom. You know, once the heat's off, Eddie, I'll be back to visit. And uh, that's a Mama Donna I promise. It's always been such a disappointment. I'm not talking about it. Can't 
believe I'm finally gonna get to meet Joshua. You must be Tanya. Hello, Morgan. Happy Thanksgiving. What wine? Oh, yes, please. It's amazing. I brought some bottles over from California, but I haven't had the chance to open them yet. So I take it you're single then. <coughs> so, um, I was thinking... Joshua! I'm not gonna let you fall off the wagon again. <clears throat> so, is this a typical Thanksgiving in the Kane household? Maureen and I have our own traditions. Guacamole stuff? Typical? There's nothing typical about our family. I mean, don't you remember the time Mom tried to deep fry that turkey? That was almost normal. Yeah, kinda, until the part she almost burnt our house down. But then we did get to eat that pumpkin pie at the fire station. Joshua, you keep eating like that and you're gonna weigh more than Jessica Stewart. That's an interesting story though, the fire station I'm in. No, it's not. My mother's just an alcoholic who goes through men quicker than she does a bottle of gin. And my father, we just found out, who we haven't seen in 17 years, is now dead. More I'm turkey? So, I'm so sorry. Uh. Anyone? Not you, Joshua. I'm not. No, no. You could have told me no. anybody else died today and I would have felt anything more than I do now. More anything. Anyone. Anyone. You know I didn't have the greatest relationship with my father either. I, um, I mean I certainly don't miss the Thanksgivings. He was so anal about veganism that he thought turkey was a beautiful bird. No offense to any vegetarians. None taken. Wait, so Miss Spriggs was your mom's best friend and your teacher? And the irony is, I liked her better when she was my teacher. After she went off with my dad, I'd never talk to him again. Any room for dessert? Morgan's famous pumpkin schnitzel pudding. I promise you it's better than it sounds. I might just have some of the donuts Josh brought. <laughs> What's your secret? What? <laughs> Morgan, I have to tell you something. Hello? What? Wait, not car accident. Fender bender? And so we return the body of the beloved of our dear Marvin Goldstein, patient, friend, to the ground from which he came. I knew Marvin well. He didn't want a big funeral. In fact, he would have rather been buried with his beloved packing peanuts. But I can tell you, he would have so appreciated everybody coming today. And I want to thank you all. You know, when, when I was a kid, my parents, both of them, they used to wake Tanya and I up at like 4 a.m. on Black Friday so we could all go shopping together. Tanya and I would like dress up the night before so we'd be ready to go in the morning, 
try to surprise my dad, but he always knew. He'd act surprised anyway. You know, that's the first time I've ever heard you talk about your parents. I have so few memories of my father. I guess I had just forgotten about them. Did your father pass when you were young? No. Well, yeah. Well, no. He died last month. Sorry. I didn't know. Yeah, me neither. I guess we all have to go sometime, right? I mean, look at Goldstein. Okay. I mean, what happened at the conference? You never talked about it. Well, just a, a spell. I get them from time to time. Dr. Hobson, I don't mean to be blunt, but even I can tell when you're bullshitting. Well, I'm sick, Morgan. Are you gonna be okay? It's terminal. I don't believe this. This is probably the last place you wanna be. This? This is nothing to fear. It's life. I'm afraid of losing. My kids, my wife. I'm not ready to leave that yet. Not dead yet, Morgan. <laughs> and the truth is, I have work to do. And so do you. No, seriously, we've got a pile of work at the office that you need to attend to. <laughs> when it comes down to it, does it even matter who dies? I mean, of course it does, but let's face it. The second you step into a cemetery, you're only thinking about yourself. The day when it's you burying your loved ones. You think about how you would feel if you could never touch or talk to those leaving the world again, and how cold it must be in the ground. It doesn't matter in the end who passes, it's the fact that a part of you passes too. I know this is no consolation, but in a way that's what it comes down to. There is no consolation. Sure, you can talk about heaven and what happens after, but down here, there's only the fact that we're all destined to lose those we care about. I guess this is usually the time I write the pep talk. Now go out there and hug someone you love. Happy Thanksgiving. But to tell you the truth, now isn't really a good time, and today, I don't really feel like it.